Hi guys, I uh, know the Structural Geology Lab can be a bit of a challenge, so I wanted to um, give you some guidance on how to uh, finish some of the problems. So let's look at problem number one, which is using this block right here. And problem number one says, use a protractor to measure the dip angles point A through F, which really should be E, there's only five of them. Uh, a horizontal line is shown where the measurement should be taken. If you do not have a protractor, estimate the angles. So let's look at A. That means we want to measure the angle right here. There's our horizontal line. And dip is measured downwards from horizontal. So we're measuring the angle of this rock layer right there. Okay, so there's horizontal, there it's dipping downwards. I'm going to estimate this at 60 degrees. Now in structural geology, dip also has direction, right? This rock is going into the ground in that direction, which means it's dipping to the east. So your answer then on the lab would look like that, 60 degrees east. Now there is another rule when measuring these uh, dip angles. There's always a direction except if your rock layers are perfectly horizontal, which would be a zero degree dip, or if they're perfectly vertical. If they're perfectly straight up, up and down, there's also not a dip angle, but other than horizontal and vertical rocks, you always have to put a direction on there. Now let's look at number two. It says, what type of fold is W? So we're looking at this fold right here, and it says anticline or syncline. Well, you pick one or the other. And then it says upright, inclined, overturned, or recumbent. You have to pick one of those four. And there are examples of that in your structural geology uh, handout, the, the explanation that I posted on D2L. And what tells you whether it's upright, inclined, overturned, or recumbent is the axis of that fold, right? You want to look at this axis whether it is um, straight up and down, tilted, whether some of the rocks are upside down, whether the fold's on its side. But look at those pictures that are provided and that will help you figure out the answer to that. Also in that lab handout, it says and gives you pictural examples of whether a fold is plunging or non-plunging. So that hopefully will help you solving those problems. Now let's look at another one of the problems that we have. Okay, so we're going to be moving on to problem number seven. In problem number seven, you're given this blank or mostly blank block diagram, and you are supposed to figure out um, what it would look like completed, meaning we want to fill in the front and the side of the block diagram. And we are given information to help us with that. You have to pay careful attention to these strike and dip symbols that are provided. So on this side, it says the rocks are dipping 73 degrees in that direction. On the other side, they're dipping 72 degrees in the opposite direction. And notice the color of these rocks is the same as that. This tells us that we can draw these rocks in like this, right? So now these rocks are dipping that way and these rocks are dipping the opposite way. Now let's look at the other information we're given. Again, these are dipping in that direction the other side is dipping in that direction. This color is the same as that color. That tells us we can draw these rocks in looking like this. When you draw these layers in, you try to keep them the same thickness throughout. Now, what about this side? Well, there's not a lot we can do with this side, but we can tell that Notice the whole fold is tilted towards you. So we know these rock layers kind of come in towards you. And then this color is the same as that, which tells us that we can draw this fold in 
like this. So then you can pick the proper diagram answer uh, for how that was drawn, and then you'll have to answer those same questions. Is it an anticline or a syncline? Is it upright, overturned, and so on? And these are the types of problems you're going to have in the rest of the lab. You're going to be looking at these symbols that are given and completing the type of structure that you see in each of those. Now on a couple of the extra credit problems towards the end of the lab, there are no strike and dip symbols, but they do tell you the ages of the rock. And remember, age in anticlines and synclines and basins and domes can help you figure out if it is an anticline or a syncline. So if there's no strike and dip symbols, pay careful attention to the age of the rocks. Hopefully this is going to help you um, finish that structure lab. And as always, if you have questions, just let me know.